opportunity. I wish I had more than half an hour. I wish I had five or six hours because I think in five or six hours, I could teach you everything I've learned in 52 years. So my goal today is gonna to be to give you opportunities to show you how these opportunities are likely to develop over the next couple of days, over the next couple of weeks, because crisis creates opportunity. We didn't create the crisis. We don't wanna benefit from it in a bad way, but certainly if there's opportunities, we wanna take advantage of them. I'm not going to bother you with theory. I'm not gonna bother you with expectations. I'm gonna bother you with simple, specific strategies. So I'm gonna go through this very quickly. If you have questions, write me. I'm gonna give my email address at the end of the presentation. So let me go to this usual disclaimer. And in 30 minutes, I can't really teach you everything I've learned in 52 years, but I can teach you what is likely to happen over the next week or two, over the next few days, to give you opportunities to take advantage of what's happening. I've traded a lot today. I'm not typically a day trader, but there've been many opportunities over the last several days to make money on this process. Not in any bad way, but certainly taking advantage of the extreme panic that is so obvious these days. You've got very high quality stocks that are selling down to virtually nil levels. Opportunities to recover on big bounces are there all the time. We wanna see the process. So I'm a rules-based trader. What I wanna do is show you how we can get answers to all of these questions. And what I really recommend you do is go through this presentation when it's over, look at the slides, and see what I'm telling you, and see most of all if it works for you. Because what I do is very specific, it's rule-based. So let me go through this very quickly. If you're doing things like this, looking at charts with all kinds of indicators on them, don't do that, it's not gonna work for you, it's gonna lead you to losses. You need something specific, which is what I call fact-backed, rule-based strategies. In other words, don't believe it if you can't see it, don't do it if you can't test it. If there's no numbers, you're gonna lose money. When I say numbers, I mean specific. What to buy, what to sell, when to buy, when to sell, how much to risk. And I've covered all of that on these slides right over here, showing you the most important things that you need to know before you make a trade. I respectfully submit to you that if you know most of these things, preferably all of these things, you're gonna be in good stead and you're gonna make money in the long run. But if you don't know what these things are or how to find them, you will lose money like most people do. So let me go forward and give you some examples. I wanna show you a specific process today that's going to make you money if you do it right. I use a structure called setup, trigger, and follow through. Three parts. If you don't have all three parts of the process, your probability of making money consistently is slim to none. You're gonna pick and choose trades simply because you feel a certain way, or you think something's gonna happen, or you've heard something on the, on the radio or the TV or from another commentator or market analyst. That's not the way to make money. Step number one, markets trade in patterns. There are many, many patterns. Most of them don't work. You have to find a pattern that works. How do you do that? Simple. You use a computer. If you can't put it on the computer, if it can't be expressed in rules or algorithms, it's probably not testable. And if it's not testable, then it's interpreted. And if you're going to interpret, you're going to make mistakes. So we need a pattern. I'm going to show you a pattern, a specific pattern that will occur in many stocks and futures over the next several days. Some of them have already occurred and allowed me to make some good money with it. Step number two, trigger. Every strategy, every setup has to have a trigger. I'll give you an example of a setup and I'll show you how that setup triggers. Every strategy has to have a follow through, the third step. Follow through consists of two parts. Number one, where will your strategy be wrong? Where will you lose money? When do you get out? When do you call it quits? It's a specific number. And that number is based on the behavior of the pattern. Two, when do you take your first profit? When do you minimize your risk effectively to zero? Number three, how do you maximize the profit? So my strategy, my structure, my methodology, setup, trigger, and follow through provides all three of these. And I'm gonna try very hard in the next half hour 
to teach you a specific pattern that is developing right now that will most likely develop over the next several days in many stocks and futures. There are many different kinds of patterns. Example, one pattern, pre-holiday seasonal, has been talked about in a very, very, very incredible book written many years ago by Art Merrill, M-E-R-R-I-L-L. If you're familiar, if you're familiar with my work, you know what I'm talking about. This book is the first book that was written on seasonal behavior. What happens before major US holidays? What's the probability of success? So one of the patterns, for example, is the USA Thanksgiving trade. Since the 1800s, late 1800s, this pattern has been correct over 70% of the time. And it's a very simple pattern. It contains everything that I've talked about, setup, trigger, and follow through. What is the setup? The setup is pre-holiday, pre-Thanksgiving. In the USA, Thanksgiving is on a Thursday. The setup occurs on a Tuesday. You buy on the close of trading Tuesday, get out on the close of trading Wednesday. You can use a stop and a target. That's the entire pattern. Setup, trigger, follow through. The statistics are very dramatic. In fact, most major US holidays show this pattern. So I went to the computer using this structure, this pattern, and I asked the question, what if I bought prior to the Thanksgiving holiday and stayed in the trade longer to maximize my profits? And again, you see this is a very specific process. It uses a computer to find these patterns. This is a seasonal pattern that's been around for many years. It says if you bought March S&P futures on the close of trading November 20th, but up on the close of trading, December the 4th, risking 3%, your results would be here. Profit to loss ratio, accuracy, stop, and so forth. So you can see, and let me back up one slide here, just one moment, please. So here I have the entire history of this pattern, which has been in existence since before the start of trading in S&P futures with 81% accuracy. No, it's not perfect but highly accurate. I can go to my history and look at every single outcome since the start of trading in S&P futures. So when I talk about fact-backed rules-based trading, this is an example of what I'm referring to. I have all the numbers. I'm a numbers guy. If you want to make money, you need to be a numbers guy or girl as well because it will serve you very, very, very profitably over the years. So here was a trade before it happened year-by-year -year performance, cumulative performance in red, and here's what happened this year. The starting date for the trade, shown in green here, reaching its profit target, and then getting out, and then you might say, but look at this beautiful trade, why didn't we get this one? That was another seasonal or another methodology, so I wanna spe be specific. You need a specific, clear methodology that has all the moving parts Otherwise, you're going to interpret. If you're going to interpret, you're going to make decisions based on how you feel, what you think, who has influenced you, what kind of fear you've had, and so forth. We don't want fear. We don't want greed. We want specifics. So the method I'm going to teach you today, because I'm having extreme focus of only about half an hour, is divergence. Divergence is one of the most popular in terms of accuracy. I should let me take that back. It's not the most popular. It's the most effective. I'm focusing on divergence because divergence tends to occur when you have major rallies and major sell-offs, as we have right now. And divergence is based on a specific pattern. Let me show you that pattern right now. Here's a chart. Doesn't matter what the chart is. I have two indicators at the bottom of the chart, and these indicators, in terms of the numbers, do not change in my work, by which I mean, I'm always using momentum, close 28, or moving average convergent divergence, MACD, nine and 18. That's this line and that's this line. They look the same, but they're actually quite different at times. These are my triggers. I'm using a pattern that occurs within these two indicators, and you can spot this pattern. And by the way, this pattern is so easy to spot even a computer can do it. If we weren't able to express this as a series of rules, 
We couldn't program it. If we couldn't program it, we wouldn't have data. If we didn't have data, we wouldn't have rules. If we didn't have rules, you wouldn't have trades that work. So let's look at the relationships. Price on the very top of the screen. Momentum 28, MACD 9 and 18. Every trading software has momentum or its equivalent rate of change. Every computer trading strategy, every computer software program for charting has MACD 9 and 18. So it's not that I'm the only one who has these. There's nothing proprietary here. I'm looking for a normal relationship or an abnormal relationship. And let me show you what I mean. Observe. Here, the price is at its lowest. But momentum is not. And NACD is not. This tells me ahead of time that this stock is going to go in the opposite direction. But that's only my first step. So I'm going to teach you a cookbook. Please pay attention and replay this. And most of all, if you don't get it, if you don't understand it, contact me. I will send you what you need to know. No charge, no tricks, no gimmicks, nothing to buy. New low in price without a new low in momentum or without a new low in MACD says we have a divergence. Step number one. Point A, find the lowest momentum previous to point A. That's B right over here, that's C. So this is press A, B, C, and D, the price that correlates to that momentum. That is my setup. I take the highest point between these two, and when that point, not on price, but on the indicator is penetrated, I have the trigger. Let me show you more specifically. And again, remember, I'm trying to teach you a new language that sometimes takes hours to teach. I'm trying to do this in a very short period of time. Same chart. I've put the points in for you. A, B, C, D, trigger point, trigger point. When that trigger point is penetrated, right over here on in this case, MACD, I have a buy setup, a buy trigger. I calculate my profit target, which is the range between the highest high and the lowest low during the period of divergence. And that gives me my first target and my second target. Again, if you don't understand it yet, stay with me. Don't leave. You will understand it by the time I'm done because I'm going to show you some that are happening right now. Let's look at another one. Normal behavior. Price and momentum going down, price and momentum going up, price and momentum going down, price and momentum going up, price and momentum going down. Normal teaches me nothing. Let's look at abnormal. Here's an abnormal situation. Price going down, right over here, momentum going up. That's how the setups develop. They're very simple because if you use the cookbook, it will serve you well. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And again, I'm giving you all the instructions here. Let's look at this one for a minute. Clear. And you might say, well, Jake, these are cherry picked. These are historical examples. You're showing them to us because they work. Well, of course, I'm showing them to you because I want to teach you something. We're going to look at some that are developing right now, and I'll show you what's going to trigger them. So look, process, cookbook, find the lowest low in price, A. B, C, D, E, trigger. Let's put them in again. <clears throat> Excuse me. A, B, C, D, E, trigger. Measure the range. Project the target. And there it is. Let's look at another one. This one should be pretty obvious to you right now, immediately. Look, lowest low in price in the last 60 days. A, B, lowest momentum, C, D, E, trigger. How did it turn out? Like so. Here's another one, Twitter. The opposite situation, new high in price, Without a new high momentum, A, B, C, 
D, lowest momentum between the two, trigger. And again, like I said, <clears throat> this is a new language which most people don't understand. If you're familiar with my work, you've seen this happen many times. It's very accurate. But let's do this. Time passes quickly. Let's look at another one. You'll look at these rules later. Check this one out. Again, lowest low in price right over here. Come on, computer, cooperate with me. Here is the lowest low in price. A, B, C, D, E, trigger. And again, purely objective A, B, C, D, E, and trigger. Do my calculations. And then there's a trailing stop procedure to maximize profit, which is blue line. I don't have time to teach that to you today, but again, I have nothing to sell you. I'm going to give you this video if you want it. And if you're not clear, I'll send you my timing triggers video, which explains this in great detail. But I think after I show you the examples that are developing right now, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's go forward in time here. As a point of information, these are so simple, we can even program it on the computer and have the computer do it for us. So let me go through these a bit. And again, I want to stress. This is not interpreted. This is not the Elliott wave where 10 people can look at the same information and come up with six or seven different conclusions. This is completely specific. And two people, 10 people looking at the same information at the same time, separate from one another, will come to the same conclusion unless they've got a learning disability or unless I'm a bad teacher. And I'm not a bad teacher. At least I haven't been. So let's take a look. Another computer example. Another computer example, and now we're going to look at some others. Check this one out. I'm going to go to, in fact, I'm going to go to where we are right now. So let's take a look. Okay, here's one that's developing now. And this is a live chart earlier today when I made my presentation. You can see what's happened to the price of DuPont. It's literally collapsed. In fact, one, let me look at the price scale just for a moment, please. Okay. The price has literally fallen apart. The question is, is there going to be a recovery? And if so, from where? So I look for the pattern. And by the way, the computer found this pattern for me. Piece of cake. Even a computer can do it. Here is the lowest intraday loan price, point A. Point B, find the lowest momentum, C, D. There's my setup. This is my trigger point, the highest momentum between the two. <laughs> Excuse me. Why am I not using MACD? Because MACD, there was no divergence. I need six days between these two points. So we use the MACD and the momentum. Whichever one has a trigger, whichever one has a setup first is the one I'm going to use. And right now, it's going to be DuPont trigger on momentum. But I want to stress, it has not triggered yet. We need for momentum close 28. To end the day, I repeat, end the day above this number, minus 14.2. If that happens, I will be a buyer. My risk will be $9.06, $9.06 per 100 shares per share. My first target will be half this amount. My full target will be the full amount. Let's see what happens with this one. I'm giving this to you in advance. If we make a new low, we recalculate the momentum points and make sure that the divergence is still there. Let's look at another one. One moment, please. Cronus. Here's one that's already triggered, and I've already traded this one. Check it out, and again, according to the rules, A, B, C, D, E, trigger. Let's see what happens with this one. It's got a target of $2.13 for the full amount. Half this amount is the first target and the stop. You'll notice there was no divergence on MACD. We're using whichever one of these triggers first. It's our backup. Let's look at another one. Here we go. How did the silver ETF top? The exact opposite situation, current chart. New high in price without a new high in momentum. How do we know that? Remember, these are numbers. So this is the number for that top. This number here is higher. 
we made a new high in price without a new high momentum, the exact opposite situation of the momentum low. We take the lowest momentum between the two. When we drop below it, we trigger, and here's the trigger. And look what happened after the trigger. Let's look at another one. I want to make sure I give you enough examples so you can see what happens with these over the next few days. Yes. Now look, everybody hates the oil stocks. They hate them. They're going to zero. But look what's happening. Hess Oil is giving us a momentum divergence setup. But remember, super important, a setup is not a trigger. Just because these are on my radar screen, just because the computer told me to get ready for a buy, doesn't mean we will get a buy. I want to be specific and clear. If we make a new low in momentum, in other words, we go below this low right over here, let me get my point right there. We make a new low here. The divergence has disappeared. That's why this is a dynamic process and you have to look at it every day or smarter yet, have the computer do it for you. Let's go to the next one. And by the way, if we trigger, my risk will be the range between the highest high and the lowest low during the period of divergence. My first target will be half that amount. It's a very specific procedure that is outlined in the notes in this webinar presentation, which I'll be glad to send to the Money Show and they can send it to you. Or if you want to, you can write it to me and I'll send it to you as well. Let's look at another one. Centene Corporation. Again, notice the process is always the same. I'm not interpreting. I'm not telling you to buy. I'm simply telling you we've got a setup waiting for a trigger and I know my exact setup point. Again, the process. A, B, C, D, E, waiting for a trigger. In MACD, A, B, C, D, here, waiting for a trigger. They could both trigger the same day. One of them could trigger, the other one might not. Let's look at another one. Simerex Energy, and again, the computer found these for me. Now look, I'm not talking about an investment here. I'm talking about a trade. What I'm saying is this. As you know, the oil stocks and the price of crude has collapsed, just like almost everything else has. The question is, is there going to be a bounce? Will there be a bounce worth trading? And I'm saying there may be a bounce. I'm not sure. I'm not going to talk about things I don't know about, but I do know this. We have a setup, and that setup will trigger if I've done my work correctly. Again, the process, the language of the market. A, B, C, D, setup, waiting for trigger. A is lower than D, while B is higher than C. Completely mechanical. It's a no-brainer. It's not subject to interpretation. There are no feelings involved here. How about this one? Here's a huge one. Futures, lean hogs. A, right over here, the lowest low in price. And the reason I'm focusing on all these lows is because there are no highs that are available right now for possible sells. They were available about a month ago. A, B, C, D, E, waiting for a trigger. Really, really simple. How about the euro? The euro is waiting for bottom as well. That's the euro US dollar, the euro currency. As you know, the dollar is going crazy. That doesn't mean anything to me, except it provides me an opportunity to either sell the dollar on a divergence sell trigger or buy a currency against it. And here is that buy right over here. A, B, C, D, E, waiting for a trigger. Boring, isn't it? Now look, this trade will require a $9,000 risk in futures. Less if you do the mini contract, less if you do the micro contract, and adjustable to what you want to risk if you do the Forex contract. But you know everything you know going into the, you need to know going into this trade. The setup, the trigger, the symbol, the market, the trigger point, the stop, the target number one, the target number two, I have not spoken very much about target number three, which is a trailing stop, but we can do that in the video that I'm going to send you. 
So when I run, as an example, my computer, I have selected different stocks that I want to watch or different features that I want to watch on the computer. It gives me a list of what to watch for. This is an old list. It's not today's list, but I think you get the idea. So I'm going to finish up. I think I've only got a half an hour, so I'm going to use my three minutes if there are any questions that want to be relayed to me. You can reach me at any of these email addresses or websites, or Chris Moody, who works with me, who's a brilliant man, does all my programming for me, and we'll be glad to help you out. So I think it's Mark. Mark, if there's any questions for me, I'll be glad to take them now. We'll still leave a couple of minutes for time. Um, all right. Let's see. We... I uh, did have a question come in that they were asking is is momentum RSI? No. Momentum is the same as rate of change. RSI has a theoretical top approaching 100, theoretical bottom approaching zero. We don't do that. Those indicators don't work really well. It's very similar to, to stochastic. They don't work really well unless you use them in a specific way. Momentum, rate of change are the same indicator. Totally easy to calculate. If you're still not sure, send me an email. Any other questions, Mark? Um, we had someone asking if you don't mind showing the rules again. Sure, absolutely. All I have to do is find them. I don't want to run over time, so Mark, if I'm done, I'm done, so kick me off when I'm ready, when you're ready to get rid of me. So here we go. Let's go to the rules right over here. So it's right over there. So those are the step-by-step -step rules, very simple to do. And again, I'm not trying to rush anybody. I'm happy to teach this to anybody who wants to see it. I have a number of videos about this and it's very specific, not subject to interpretation. It's completely mechanical and completely programmable and doable even by a computer. Any other questions, Mark? Uh, looks like we have about a minute left. We had um, someone asking if you don't mind giving your thoughts on the S&P 500. S&P 500 made a completely normal, by the rules, momentum divergence top. It's come down to long-term support. We're due for a bounce. I can't predict the bottom right this point in time because we do have some intraday divergence. But right now, we're in free fall. The only thing I can say is look at individual stocks and futures as I did here today. Find the divergence and trade those. Right now, there is no divergence. No bullish divergence in S&P futures or the Dow. And by the way, panic creates opportunity. And one of the best ways to take advantage of that opportunity in terms of panic is to use the divergence indicator. It's not perfect. It's not 100%, but it's pretty damn good. All right. And would you, um, uh, question was, does this only work on futures? No, this works on stocks, it works on S&P, it works on futures, it works on Forex, it works intraday, it works in any time frame. As long as you're following the specific rules, clearly that's the most important thing. And the rules are not subject to interpretation. So if you have to sit there and say, it looks like a divergence, there's a problem. Because it doesn't look like anything, it's very specific. It is what it is, and it's always, always operational, algorithmic, and straightforward. Any other questions? Uh, let's see. We had um, someone who was wondering what what do you use CCI for? CCI, MACD, momentum, and the um, detrended oscillator. So there are four indicators that you can use for divergence. I'm going to repeat: DTO, detrended oscillator, commodity channel index. And ACD and momentum. The rules are the same. If you want to look at all four at the same time and take the one that triggers first, you can do that, but you'll get fewer trades, but you'll have more accurate trades if you do it that way. Anything else, Mark? Um, let's see. Uh, someone was just asking if you had any comments on Microsoft, and then that'll be the last one. Microsoft, I love the stock for the longer term. On a monthly basis, it's come down to support. It is a buy, but there's no divergence at this time. So in terms of the divergence method, I don't see a setup. There are a lot of other better stocks to play for a bounce right now, but as an investment, 
you can use a divergence methodology that I showed you on monthly or weekly charts, <clears throat> charts for longer time frame. So I think my time is up, right, Mark? Uh, looks like it, yes. Jay, we thank you so much for being here today. Mark, thanks for the opportunity. If anyone wants clarification, just send me an email. We'd be glad to do that. And great. Thanks again, Mark.